I guess this next reaction is called the haloform reaction. It works best for methyl ketones. So let's look at an example here. Let's take um, benzene and put a CH3 on one end just like so. So again, just make a little note down here. This works best for methyl ketones. So what happens here is under these conditions that I'm going to show you here, so what do we need? We need to have um, iodine. Usually we have excess iodine there, so we have plenty of it in there. You have hydroxide present in there also. Um, this also works, by the way, with chlorine and bromine, and we'll just throw iodine in there too just to, to complete it. But anyway, what we get here is we get a, a, a halogenation at our alpha position. So we're going to get PHCI3. Okay, now what happens next is that base hydroxide comes in and grabs this carbon, just like so. And then we have our carbon, right, oxygen minus charge, we have a Ci3 here, and we have an OH that we just added on there. Now this next step, we come down here and we kick off Ci3. Now, with three electron withdrawing groups, those three iota groups on carbon there, that Ci3 operates as a reluctant leaving group here. So what we form here is our phenyl, or oxygen, or OH, and then you have your iota carbon, right, that triiodo methyl, and now a minus charge. So those iota groups help stabilize that negative charge there. Now, that once that is formed, very quickly, it comes over and deprotonates our carboxylic acid to form our final products here. So what you get here is you get your benzoate, right? So you get your minus charge there, and then you get CHI3. So this this is known as the iodoform test. So it's a it's a qualitative test that you can use to test for the presence of methyl ketones. And what happens here is that this thing is a PPT. So it solidifies out of the test tube. So if you have your test tube sitting there and this reaction is positive, then it just becomes very cloudy, right? Um, kind of quickly. It's the same idea before with that last reaction that we saw from our previous le lecture, right? Here, you can test for the presence of aldehydes because bromine, if you recall, is orange. And if you have a reaction that occurs, then you would become over on this side, you become less orange or colorless. Right, so they're QA tests that we can use in laboratory type situations. All right, in this next section here, let's take a look at alkylation of enolates. So if you look below, the reaction actually is pretty straightforward. So conditions might be LDA, low temperature, CH3Br. All right, so we know with LDA, we're going to deprotonate it at one of our alpha positions. These are equivalent, so we'll just get one, um, one type of product, one regio isomer. So here's our enolate, right, with resonance here. We're going to grab as a nucleophile our carbon right here. That's our electrophile. Kickoff bromo is our leaving group. And we have our methyl on a wedge and a dash, so you have a mixture of enantiomers there. Um, since you use a base, the only thing to watch out for that is you have to consider kinetic and thermodynamic products um, when applicable, okay? Well, the enamine reaction actually is composed of reactions that we've already seen. So let's take a look at it together here. So enamine, ene, double bond, and amine, right? So here we start off with a ketone, right? Now... To get an enamine, we have to add a secondary amine. If you recall from 
previous chapters. Right? And then we have um, NR2 present in there, some concentration of H plus that works well for this. So then we form an enamine here. And again, here is your ene and here is your amine, right? That's your enamine. And what we're going to do next is we're going to react that with an acid chloride. So what happens here, and we'll look at the reaction um, down here below in a little bit more detail, is that these electrons essentially come down here and that this comes over and attacks right here, right, and does this. Okay, so what that's going to give us is this next intermediate that's kind of like an aminium ion. And then we're going to have hydrolysis. So imine, essentially imine hydrolysis. All right, so let's take a look at this down below. So mechanism. Right, the first thing that we have to do is go from the ketone to the enamine. So to save a little bit of time, I've written this out for us, and we're just going to put in arrows and stuff like that as we go through. So let's put in our lone pair on our oxygen. Right, and here we have H plus, right, and H2O. So we have some concentration of H3O plus here. All right, and then also in solution we have, we have this. So the first thing that's going to happen here is we're going to grab a hold of an H from H3O plus. Okay, that's going to give us this with a positive charge on it. And I'll just make a note down here that we have resonance of that too. All right, next thing that happens here is that the lone pair from our nitrogen, because right, remember our original conditions have that NH com compound in it also, that's going to come over and that's going to act as a nucleophile there on that carbon. So we're going to swing around and we're going to react right there. And we're going to do this. That'll give that oxygen another lone pair. It puts a positive charge on the nitrogen. And then that positive charge is then deprotonated and pulled off with water. So this comes over here onto the nitrogen atom there, right? So that's your flow of electrons there. Okay. So in the end of that step, we're going to end up with this. Now, what we want to do here is we want to kick that off. And to do that, we, we can't just kick off hydroxide because we're under acidic conditions. So to do that, we're going to have to protonate it. So we're going to swing around here and grab an H atom. Okay, that's going to leave us with an OH2 plus, right? At that point in time, we can boot that water off. So we're going to kick off the water there, all right? And then what I've done is I've just rearranged this molecule so that I could make it fit down here a little bit better. Now, as we kick that off, we're going to see this collapse of electrons here. So we can kind of swing them down and we can do this. That'll lead to this. And of course, that has resonance. The resonance structure of that would be the same structure that we've written up here, except without that flow of electrons. So it just have a positive charge at, um, at this position right here. Okay. But anyway, um, the last step of that is we're adding H2O. And H2O is going to come over and do a deprotonation. So we're going to grab one of those H's here. We're going to swing down just like so and push these electrons back up to the top here. Okay, and that'll, that'll give us uh, one of our products. Now notice here that we get a bunch of products written out. Okay, so, so you can lose an H from here, and that can give you um, cis or trans, right? Um, or you can lose an H from down here, which would give you this product. All right. Now, those can react in, in various ways. So that's a little review from first part of our uh, class. I think it was chapter 19. So once we form these enamines, these things can react with all sorts of electrophiles, essentially. So the one that we saw up in the example that we introduced was an acid chloride. So let's take a look at how that would work. So an acid chloride right, takes our lone pair from our nitrogen, 
All right, we're going to swing it around here to our carbon. And then this is going to come over and make a bond right there. And then we're going to kick these electrons up to the oxygen atom. So that puts a positive charge on our nitrogen. It makes this tetrahedral intermediate. And that has electrons that can plop down here. And then we can kick off that chloro group again to form your iminium ion essentially there. Now the last step of that, that's that H3O plus step. So that H3O plus step here, we simply do a hydrolysis. So again, looking back at your notes, you can, from previous chapters, you can, you can work your way through this. You should be able to do that now too, but let's take a, a look at it together just to review a little bit here. All right, so here's your NH2 plus here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have water come in and attack right here. So remember the big change is that this guy right there needs to become a carbonyl. And in order to do that, we, we have to, to get an oxygen from somewhere and we get it from water. So here's our OH2 plus, right? So that's the, the group that's been added here. Now we're gonna come over and we're gonna grab one of these H's, right? That's gonna give us our oxygen with two lone pair on it. And then what we want to do, right, is we want to convert this into a nice leaving group. That means we have to have a plus charge on it because we are under acidic conditions, right? So we're going to protonate it. So let's come over here. And let's grab an H. Okay. And once we do that, we now have a good leaving group. So then what we can do is we can kick off that leaving group Right? And we can do it by kind of pulling our electrons down from our oxygen here. So remember we have those lone pairs here. So we can swing around, we can do this, and we can boot off the nitrogen then. So there's our leaving group. And we're left with this protonated form. And then the last step that we have here is you have water coming over and grabbing that H and kicking off that um that that hydrogen to give us this compound All right so here we form a di ketone so we'll, we'll see actually in some of the reactions towards the end of this chapter that this whole process like that that whole hydrolysis and the imine formation um, <clears throat> so we'll see in some of the reactions at the end of this chapter that that whole enamine reaction followed by hydrolysis is part of a larger mechanism that we'll that we'll see that has many steps so keep these in mind as we progress through the chapter